Um, so today we're going to take a look at a quick little tutorial on how to get your images um, that are done analog, so done by hand, whether they're watercolor, pen, uh, pencil, how are you going to get them into uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, whichever one you're going to use for the brief, depends on the brief obviously and um, how you're going to take them into there, scan them in, and how to edit them all the while keeping a sort of a very hand done look. Um, again, this is depending on the brief. If you want a logo or something, then you're probably going to work almost exclusively in Illustrator and have very little variations of color um, that make it look like it's hand done. So um, what we're going to talk about is we're going to take a look at essentially how to get a result like this, which is um, has got a fair amount of digital in it, as you can see from all my layers here, um, and I'll um, I'll take you guys through this process. But this is essentially what we're going to be doing today. And um, taking a look at um, the process behind this, obviously, is uh, relatively simple. It's just a, a pretty simple set of steps repeated mixed with other steps are so using layer masks, using opacity and color changes. Um, and what this means is that, say, if you're doing this for a client and they sort of take a look at this and they don't like that sort of circle there, you can just go in and delete that for them. That's not added directly onto your thing. Um, and obviously, you can then go behind and say, you know, like that took me three hours to delete that layer and charge them accordingly as a freelancer. Um, it's a bit a bit shady, but um, they don't know better, and at the end of the day, you need to justify your fees in one way or another. So you can you can move these things around. You can delete them. Obviously, as you guys are well aware in Photoshop, there's a vast array of things that you can do. You can change the color of certain areas if you don't like them. So this is working this way when you're going to have something digital like this, and you're going to have to hand it into a client that looks like it's done analog. This is really the best way to work because if you have to do this entire thing by hand and then your client decides that they don't like a color or something or they don't like the way the wolf is looking, then you've got to redo the whole thing. That's not very time efficient. So this, um, these sort of set of steps will really help you out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a pencil drawing and we're going to take a look at the difference in between pencil and ink, obviously. And on this one, we've got both. So this has very simply just been scanned in. Um, nothing's been done to this yet. You can even see the crease of the sketchbook page in there. And what we're going to do is we want to use the picture of this girl here and get some digital elements. So maybe we'll give her some makeup, some lipstick, whatever. We'll see that in a sec. But um, the first thing we're going to need to do is um, put this on a transparency layer. So put this on a multiply layer so that we can work behind it. Now, you could work on top of this um, using just creating a new layer, putting that layer on multiply, and then with a basic paintbrush, just coming in and adding, you know, I don't know, let's, let's be really silly and just give her some lipstick. Okay, so I'm not losing my drawing behind here, and obviously I'm using a Wacom tablet to do this. Okay, so we can do this that way. Okay, and it, it seems to be working just fine, and we can just do whatever we want to do. Now, obviously, the, the more layers you put in, the heavier your file is going to be, but also the, most, the more amount of control you're going to have. Now, this is really up to you really, up to your experience in terms of how comfortable you are with you know, the changes that the client may very well ask you to do and how long do you think that's going to do, take you. So it all really just comes down to your work process. In this instance, um, if my client's not a fan of Batman and decides that her hair needs to be a different color, I'm in a little bit of trouble because my lips and my hair are on the same layer. Okay, so ideally what I'd want to do, in this case, it's not a big deal because they're separated, but if there was, I don't know, like a stray hair going over the lips, for instance, then that would be an issue because I have to change the color of the hair to something else, but it, if I do that, it changes the color of the lips too. So this can be a bit of a problem. So what you might say is, okay, well, we'll put the hair on one layer 
and make sure it's on multiply. Okay, and then name that. It's important, really, really important to name your layers because um, you're not gonna, the only person that's going to be handling this file. And if you give this off to a designer who's meant to print it, or if they have to do some last minute changes and you're not available, they need to be able to see something that doesn't look like this, where it's just layer one and there's a tiny little freckle down here. And where is it? Which layer is it on? We don't know. So it's important to name your layers um, and name them in a way that's going to make sense to more than just you. So don't just name this like green because that won't make sense. So name it hair. It's pretty simple. It's a bit of a pain to go through and name your layers every time, every time you create one, but I guarantee you it'll save you a lot of headaches later down the track. So we put our hair on a new on a layer. Let's put the lips on another layer as well. Okay, and we'll choose a color. So now we're going to have obviously a lot more control. Obviously, you know, I'm going through these basic ideas of, of Photoshop that you guys are all familiar with, but um, you get the idea. So the problem here obviously is that my layer is not on multiply so i'm not getting that opacity see through if i put it on multiply up here in my blending options where it says normal you just go down the third one down and it puts it on multiply and you can see that straight away you can see the pencil drawing behind that so this is me painting on top of my drawing on on various multiply layers now the issue with that is it comes in if i'm going to do this on top of everyone Multiply essentially acts like a screen, so they're going to stack up on top of one another. And if I have a skin color, so let me create a new skin color underneath my layer here. So I'll just call this skin, put it on multiply, and get a different, I guess, get a, some sort of skin-ish looking color. Okay, and I'm going to start painting behind this. You may notice it's, it's pretty subtle. I might need to use a different color, really, for this. But you may notice that it's affecting the green and the red because they're multiplying, they're sort of seeing through to the orange. You can see that there in the hair, it started to really make it a bit darker. I'll choose a, a bit of a darker color to show you exactly what I'm talking about. But if I'm going to paint in here, you can see that it is affecting the red of the lipstick. Yeah? You can see that straight away. And that's a bit of a problem because now I need to essentially paint around the lips and that's, that's a no-go. So what you want to do, instead of putting your, your color layers on multiply, you want to put your background layer on multiply. So this pencil drawing. So I've just deleted all those layers and we're going to start afresh. So we're going to make a new layer from this. Very simply, I haven't gotten anything selected. I'm just using the brush tool. I'm just going to hit Command J on my keyboard. Okay, Command J means just duplicate. So you can see immediately that I've got a new layer duplicated in my panel here. It's just gone immediately to layer one. So I undo that. Command J, it duplicates it. If I do that again and again and again and again, it just duplicates that layer every single time. We don't want these, so let's just delete them. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm now going to go to this layer. I'm going to hit D on my keyboard for default. If you look over here, when I hit D, my colors are going to go to the default colors. So black foreground, white background. And that's pure black and pure white. So hit D and you can just immediately go to that background color. And then I'm going to fill my background here with just white. So essentially I'm going to delete that layer. Okay, without deleting it, because I still want a white background there. And I'm going to hit Command Delete. And it's going to fill with my background layer. Okay, so I undo that. I'll just zoom back in onto that. Okay, Command Delete. And it fills it in black. If I hit Option Delete, it will fill it with my foreground layer, which is black. Okay, so Command Delete White, which is my background. Option Delete Black, which is my foreground. So I want it to be white. Um, by the way, if I have this in black and then put it on multiply, you'll see that it's just going to be become black, okay? Because multiply acts essentially as everything that's white becomes completely see-through and then all the colors just elaborate onto that background. So because my background here is black, everything just becomes black and you can't see anything because of how that color looks. If I change the color of this, I have to lighten it up a little bit, then you can see my drawing come through. 
Okay, so essentially all the, all the whites have gone to whatever color I'm making my background be. And that's essentially what I want it to do because I want now to have this on multiply and be able to paint underneath it. So I'm going to go back to my background and create a new layer. Okay, um, so I've now got this layer on multiply and this layer which is blank and there's just a white background layer that's going to support this. If I put this on blank it's not going to change anything because there's nothing behind this white to make that disappear. Okay, so just get in the habit of sort of working this way, it's a bit of an easier way to work. Then on this one I can save this as a normal layer, okay, I don't have to put this on multiply because I now have this info on multiply above it. So I can then come and make sure that I'm on this layer and now if I paint with my red for the lipstick it's going to look exactly the same except I'm in a different order now. Okay, so the, the red of the lipstick is still going to look exactly the same. The difference is here if I come in with a new skin layer behind my lips, so I'll name this lips and I'll name this guy skin. Okay, I want my skin to be behind my lips, otherwise if I paint over my lips I'm not going to be able to see them anymore. So I'm going to take this color here and start painting on my skin layer and because it's above it obviously it's going to go, just my opacity, it's going to go over it. Okay, that, those lips are still there, they're just being done behind that skin. So I want that to be behind it. Okay, and now what I've got is no color change in the lips at all. Yeah, the lips are staying exactly the same color. So this is, it's just a better way to work when you're working. It, it, it's a bit nonsensical because you'd want to work with tracing paper or something if you're doing this analog and work behind, um, in front of your layer, on top of it. Okay, so you're looking at your drawing and you're painting on top of it. But Photoshop allows you to do this and it's a pretty cool way of working where you're working with your drawing intact on top and then you're painting behind it using your drawing layer as a multiply. But all these guys, all my colors here are normal. Okay, so that's a really sort of a basic straightforward way of working. Now, this principle kind of holds up through everything that we're going to take a look at. This idea that you want to have your drawing layer here on multiply, whether it's an ink drawing or a pen drawing, doesn't matter. You want to have that at the very top and we're going to lock that. Okay, that just means I'm a bit of a retard sometimes. I'll just, I'll forget that I've got that selected and I'll start painting on it and then save it and then sort of three hours later when I've done millions of things and I can't undo it, I realize what I've done and then I have to start all over. So I generally tend to lock that so that if I'm with my brush it just gives me that no entry sign like this. Yeah. So that just means, you know, Jeremy, you're not able to paint on that. So that's a little help for me. I do that, you guys don't have to do that. Um, so there you go. So this is the sort of the basic precept of, of sort of touching up your images digitally in Photoshop using an analog layer and two digital layers or however many digital layers you want. And what that means is essentially, obviously the client can then make as many changes as they like and that doesn't affect you too much because you can just, you know, at the drop of a dime, you can just go in and change those quite easily. Okay, so essentially this way of working, now I'm using a paintbrush, but you guys could easily just use different tools um, say a lasso tool. So obviously this helps to be used with a, a Wacom tablet. I'm doing this extremely crudely, but you get the idea. Okay, so I've got that in there now and I'm going to do option delete and it's going to fill with my layer or I can use, I mean I very often use the, um, the polygon lasso tool, this one. So that gives me a little bit more control. It's a bit of a, a straighter edge, but you'll get the idea, okay? So a combination of all these things, whatever tool you use, the principle stays the same. You're working underneath your layer. Now, that's all fine and good when you've got something like, you know, that you want to make it look analog, but what if the result you're looking for 
is it needs to be a little bit more vector like you've done this illustration by hand and obviously it's for a logo that's going to be an illustrated logo of a deer or something for two e's whatever how are you going to go straight in and do this now you could if it's a simple enough drawing like one of these um cherry blossoms you could just draw over that in photoshop so you make a new layer um choose choose a black brush and just redraw over it okay it might be a little bit time consuming but you'll know that you get a pretty clean black pure line that you can then put some color underneath later okay so all i'm doing now is just tracing over this drawing with a flat black brush and this is, what I'm doing now to this one is a little bit pointless because it already is ink. So really I should have sort of planned ahead and done this drawing cleanly with ink. And that's the whole point of this is for you guys to understand what may or may not be done to this drawing later on so that you can plan ahead. So I'm now going to create a new layer behind this. I'll call this Blossom and I'll call this Colors. Okay, and then I can come in with different colors. Just get a, a pink in here. Cherry blossoms are usually these kind of colors. And just paint behind that. Okay, and that's going to translate, whether I'm doing this in Illustrator, using the pen tool or anything else, it's going to translate a lot better and that's going to be a lot more apt for a logo. A shitty one at that, but it's still, the medium in itself is usable as a logo. Okay, so you get the idea. All these layers are just placed in one behind the other. All right, so I need to take this and now clean it up because this isn't good enough for me to, to use like this. I want to get rid of all this stuff up here. I just want the girl. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do obviously is I'm going to put a layer mask on this. Okay, because this is going to be a little bit complicated. I'm not going to want to delete any of this. And... I'm just going to go ahead and paint over some of the excess that I want to get rid of. Okay, I'm just going to do this very crudely. Obviously, it's very difficult because I've drawn over her hair in here and down there, so it might be a little bit harder to do. I might need to use a softer edge brush um, and just pretend like that drawing wasn't there. Okay, for the purposes of this demo, it's not super important that I get this incredibly clean at first glance and then because the rest of it is all done I can just go in and fill my layer mask with that black area now that I've sort of clipped it out okay so I'm happy with that now I'm gonna go here and this is a really important step whenever you're using a drawing is to play with your curves and your levels okay so your levels brings up by command L Okay, Command L brings up your levels. Make sure that you're on the layer selected. Okay, make sure that you've, when you've got a mask, you've got the brackets around here. So that's the mask selected, that's the layer selected. You guys are all familiar with that. Okay, Command L. And I'm just, I want to make this more contrasting. I think there's sort of faded down here. I don't like it. So what I need to do is I need to drag this over to a point where I'm kind of happy with everything. Now you guys might see, or not, depending on how bright your screen is, that this is actually starting to show some of the paper texture behind it. Now I don't want that, so I'm going to boost the whites back up again. Now I'm going to lose some detail. Obviously the more you do it, the more detail you're going to lose. But you're going to get something as close as possible to just pure white and some nice dark colors. Okay, so that's a good way of editing your images. If you've done something in pencil and you want to come in and just play with that later on and just add some, you know, some colors behind her. So let's give her, you know, one of those neo-punk kind of line around the eyes. Okay, so make, it look, make her look Indian or whatever. Um, and we can play around with that quite easily and change these colors and that's just all on there all right so that still looks very thoroughly hand drawn because it is essentially 90 percent of it is is just a hand drawing but what if you want something that's a lot cleaner than that so let's close this 
Ideally, what you'd want is to work with something like this or like that. And I'll just open all three of these guys up so you can see what we're doing. So we've got this one, which is a mix of two different styles. We've got a nice clean black, nice and thick. And you can see here, you can see that paper texture, okay, which we're going to get rid of in a sec. And then on the other side, we've got this sort of really rough, loose pencil drawing um, that, that I've done. So this is copied, the black side here is copied from a sticker. And this is just my take on it on the other side, just going a little bit more crazy and over the top. So you can see this immediately, that there's this sort of paper texture behind it there, okay? The problem with that, so, is that if I put this on multiply, it, these are going to show because they're not white, they're a shade of grey, alright? So I'm going to repeat the steps that I did last time, okay? I'm going to hit Command J and duplicate that layer, go to my background layer, hit D, and then hit Command Delete and fill that with white, okay? Go back to my layer 1, put it on multiply, and now we're good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna create a new layer underneath that, I'm gonna lock that. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer underneath that called color. And I'm gonna put, I'll put a, like a light yellow behind this, or an orange so you can kind of see the, the grain in the paper. So if this isn't perfectly white, when I'm gonna come in and paint behind this, uh, oops, sorry, I'm still on grayscale. Let me fix that real quick. CMYK, don't flatten, yeah, okay. All right, if I paint gray behind this, you can see that it's, it's still got that paper texture, which is not ideal. I mean, obviously, depending on what I want, that's not great, okay? I, I really want this to be nice white um, because this is going to then be vectorized later on. So that's an issue for me, okay? And you can see it even more down here, that grain of the paper is, is showing up no matter what color I use because it's on a transparency layer, it's showing through to my color. So I don't, I don't want that to show. So I'm going to go in here, unlock it, and then play with my levels. And you'll see if I boost the whites in here, you'll see those whites begin to disappear and the, the, that white will be nice and clean. Okay, you guys can see that. Okay, if I, I'll just exaggerate it and make sure you guys can see. So you can see that paper texture there. If I sort of drop that off and boost my whites, all that sort of disappears and it becomes a nice clean white. Okay, it's not perfectly clean because I've still got a pencil sketch underneath it, but it's as good as it's going to get in Photoshop. Okay, so this, these kind of areas are where you guys need to plan ahead when you're doing your hand-drawn image um, and you need to think ahead that Photoshop has its limits because if I, obviously I can get rid of all this pencil drawing, but if I get rid of it too much, if I boost the whites too much, then I'm going to start getting rid of a lot of detail that I don't want to get rid of. Okay, so Photoshop absolutely has its limitations in terms of what you can do and what you can't do. So you guys, when you're doing this, when you're making your pencil drawing, before scanning it in, you need to think that, okay, this line here needs to go. Okay, which you can do in Photoshop, obviously. Like, I can just come in now with a, a white brush and just paint that out. Okay, but that's very time-consuming and I might make a mistake and paint over my ink, like I've just done there. Okay, and you don't want to have to go around your entire drawing and find every single little, up. Oh, there's one and... Here's another, it just takes too much time. It's a lot easier to plan ahead and just do a nice clean pencil drawing then erase your pencil when your ink is dry. Then you don't have to deal with this kind of nonsense when you're in Photoshop, okay? So the, the basic premise behind this is, is still the same, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm painting behind it and you'll notice that, you know, I'm not, it, this is far from a perfect line because my black line is so thick that it doesn't matter if I go over the edge, the, the black line is hiding it, okay? And so this is a really kind of very straightforward, easy way to work in different colors on, a, on an analog drawing using, 
your um, brush or your shape tools or whatever it is that you're going to use that really just depends on your sensitivity using different colors using different layers um, obviously if you're going to use a different layer for every single color that you put in then your file is going to be heavy as hell and it's going to be a mess of millions and millions of different layers but you'll have a lot more control so the trade-off in between control and file size in terms of megabytes is is really up to you and to your experience in terms of dealing with clients and dealing with these kind of files that you know what can i do how far can i push how many layers can i add to my work without going ballistic and starting to just have like layer 27 copy 3 and that kind of nonsense okay so again really really basic straightforward i am really just flapping in colors in here and it doesn't matter if i go above and beyond because i've got my black here okay so this is something that's going to be really easy for us to edit because all these colors are on a layer and they're all separate and it's really easy for us to add color into here okay so again basic very easy premise of photoshop adding colors to an image that's just got a black side and again i'm using my drawing layer as the top layer and keeping the rest on multiply underneath it okay so let's see how far we can go with this this is another example of that so this is a nice easy clean line okay so again let's repeat the process command j i think this is in grayscale again yep okay so command j put you on multiply and fill this guy in white make a new layer and then let's get painting on this and we can really start to add some detail quite simply and quite easily without too much effort okay so because the effort really comes in at the the first stage when i'm doing this as an analog drawing that's when i'm putting in the effort to get all the detail so that when I then go and digitize it, I don't have to do as much work. Okay? So, it, again, this idea of planning ahead for you guys. How is this going to work in Photoshop? How am I going to scan it? How am I going to touch it up? In this case, I don't have to play with my levels because it's near perfect already. I've got it black and white. I've scanned it well. And there's no paper texture here. Okay? So that's, that's a quick look at that. Again, same thing here. This is a... There's a bit of remnants of pencil in there, but same thing, put this on a multiply layer, work behind it, and you can really start to get some, some cool stuff happening. So that's just a quick look at these, at these ideas of how to scan something in like that, okay? Next up, we're gonna just take a quick look at how to do this guy here, all right? So that's coming up in the next video.